Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I wanted to show y'all my first experiments with making molds of my fairy house um, doors to another realm or homes for the gnomeless or all of the different things that I've been sculpting from polymer clay. I really wanting I really wanted to be able to start making resin molds of them. So let's get started. Um, click. And so here it's the, I'm using amazing what's the product name amazing mold putty I'd really like to be able to use um, the smooth on like pourable silicone because I feel like I might get a better cast with that but this amazing mold putty is available from like Hobby Lobby it mixes by volume or weight um, to a 1 1 ratio so very simple and straightforward and it's been it's been very forgiving for if I don't get the weight very accurate. Um, because I, ideally I would have a scale that would measure in milligrams instead of just grams because I feel like there's a there is a big difference between the low end of the 20 gram and the high end of the 20 gram or you know you know what I mean and so I'm like how particular is it and apparently it doesn't seem to be too particular. Um, but yeah just weighing out the separate portions um, <laughs> And uh, they're very clearly like part A and part B, but it's really nice. You don't have to worry about adding part B into part A or part A into part B. Like it's not, it's not particular. So uh, this is pretty Von proof um, is a nice way of putting it. So, <laughs> but yeah, we just take the two pieces and smoosh and then start uh, folding them together or like rolling and folding. Um, very similar method to what I use whenever I'm mixing polymer clay, but you want it to be homogenous, like completely the same color all the way through. I like wearing gloves because I typically have like I don't know, dog hair covered hands or something. It's just, and also I don't want to accidentally get some of this underneath my fingernails and then eat it. Not that that's ever happened before with like polymer clay, but <laughs> just, it's a good idea to wear gloves, like safety and stuff. Um, that, and I'm sure this has something in it that is um, like a skin irritant, but um, I'm using a marble surface here. I don't know how this would react against plastics or the finish on if you have like a wood surface or something um I really like this marble cutting board it's been my work surface since almost the very beginning um of my career as an artist so yeah just really getting that melded in together now also in the instructions I don't have them directly on hand but um this stuff doesn't have a very long pot time, which is the amount of time that it stays soft and will take a mold so I think it's like three minutes I don't know I don't have the instructions on hand but so just keep an eye on it um, and because you do not want to go over that time period because then you kind of just wasted your product and so I've taken and I've smushed it um, my original the masterpiece the master mold um, is, I don't know I really need to work on the vocabulary <laughs> again if y'all can't tell that I'm a noob pretty much a noob at this, but I'm building a wall with the mold around the fairy house door that I sculpted from polymer clay. Um, I wanted to give myself a very, enough of a bed to smush into to be able to capture all of the details before the polymer clay came into surface with my, came into contact with my hard surface. Um, but I also, I wanted some options here for if I wanted to pour the resin a little bit thicker, um, I'd be able to do that because you don't have to fill up the mold every time. But it's nice to have some of those options. And um, I'm kind of just messing around here. I wanted it to like kind of look nice. So I'm using like the backs of my fingers to scrape and keep everything like shaped together. Um, but after this, like you let it set for like 20 minutes. I wait, I tried to wait 30 um, just to be extra super certain, but I wasn't able to wait the, for the full 30 minutes. So it really means 20, like 20, like I was at like 20 minutes and 30 seconds of not touching it. And I was like, I gotta touch it. And then, <laughs> and it did fine. It didn't take up any more fingerprints or anything like that. So I'm just tidying up a little bit and you can see through the center, that little window there, I let it just bubble through. I didn't know how I felt about that. Um, so now 
we have coming up. I uh, I unmolded it off camera. So I actually made a second mold um, so that I could show you guys um, kind of what I was doing. And so here, this is the second mold, <laughs> the second attempt. Um, and I wanted to tidy up that inner window a bit because I was going to test with both um, casts and see um, how much of a difference it made in the final piece, whether or not I just let that um, mold compound just bubble on through or if I wanted to keep it like very down and smooth. Um, you can see like I'm pointing at it but like uh, yeah I'm trying to keep in that little crevice there any of that mold compound. It ended up whenever I unmolded it um, I was able to just like snip it back with some very fine tipped scissors um, but yeah you don't have a whole lot of time like that pot time doesn't give you a whole lot of time to mess around and stuff so you kind of want to get it in there get it clean um and then continue on oh, my hair <laughs> sorry I was getting in like really close so I guess thank goodness you guys are only looking through my messy hair instead of my giant head being completely in the way <laughs> but yeah and again I'm just fidgeting and fiddling with it any kind of excess I try to like pop off towards the side but um I don't know I, at the time of recording this I still haven't done the resin casting so I don't know if this way was better or if I should have just stuck with the other way and so now I have an example that I can show you of it being unmolded um and that's I was so scared of it tearing because this is a very thin you know mold I was being stingy with the uh, compound but um it's as easy as this you guys and i didn't use any mold release no water no, nothing like that it just comes right off and so on that note i'm going to leave this to pass to vaughn she's going to continue i'm going to i'm not crazy i promise um i'm going to keep talking but in a different format so bye <laughs> So here you can see I've done a couple of castings and this one went perfectly. I could not have hoped for a better casting. Um, it has a little bit of like weirdness going on on the back, but I don't got to worry about that. Um, and it's just, I mean, it picked up all the detail really nicely. It's a little bubbled weird here where the window was, but I think that'll just give us a really nice deep effect. And it gives me the option of I can, whenever I do the pour, um, it doesn't have to fill up the entire mold um, if you're using resin with this. And so you could actually have it be like a little see-through, kind of. Um, this one, I mixed actually more of the mold than what I did on this one by like a whole, like two grams. Um, but too much of it went to the walls and not enough went to the back. So you can see here, there's some light coming through where the door handle is and it's very flimsy now and also we got some air bubbling here which is a problem for me um and then we have some little stringy stuff here that'll need trimmed up and um uh, i could add more of the mold compound possibly i don't know if it would adhere to itself but this one i feel like with that big texture pattern right there is a little bit of a failure. I might be able to fill in, you know, make it look like it was to be on purpose, but there's, I, I didn't make enough, the mold itself deep enough to be able to press in and make full impact. And so I wasted probably 26 or 26 grams of each compound. Um, so 52 grams of this by not by being stingy and so this is a note to future self and uh, other crafters that like spend a little bit more to give yourself a good solid foundation um and that way you don't have to worry about kind of wasting it um so i'm going to experiment and see how i might be able to salvage this um but there's no telling so um, if y'all have any ideas, I'd love to hear from you on how to salvage this mold. But I at least got one that I feel like was pretty perfect out of the deal. 
Um, and to cast with this, um, I'm just going to be using Clearcast 7000. And I'm going to be adding in some... Where is it at? What color is this? This is Teakwood alcohol ink to give it a nice brown color. And then I'm going to add in, uh, very carefully, um, some green possibly on the edges. Like I'm going to be very specific about where I'm putting the ink. So it's going to be all clear. I'm going to put the brown in around in this area, the green in around in this area. And then I'm going to settle in some silver pearlex to try to give the stones a nice gray look because everything's going to be settling forward. Those pearlex pigments are heavier, so they settle. Um, and then when, bless you, whenever it comes out, um, I'm going to do like a wash and stuff on it, but that's actually going to be a separate tutorial. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or ideas, I'd love to hear from you. Um, congratulations to the winner of this fairy door in my most recent, uh, Tuesday live stream. Um, and in my giveaways, I will always be giving away the original, um, but then I am going to be saving the casts that I made from them, um, for, uh, unanticipated purposes. Uh, I don't really know what we're going to be doing with them yet. I want to see what we can do with them before I make any promises and commitments to what's going to be done. But um, I'm really excited though to be branching out like this. So thanks again for watching you guys. Um, all of my links to my social media and everything are down below. And uh, yeah, until next video, happy craft and I'll see you all around. Mwah! Bye! <laughs> So here I wanted to show you guys, I was able to salvage a little bit, doing a second casting with just a little bit more of the mixed compound, I was able to fill in where it had pushed through on the handlebar and that kind of lack of texture, because I figured I'd rather have to deal with this little line than to have to deal with a spot that was a complete and total lack of texture. So um, in a future tutorial, I am going to compare the two molds and see how that translates into reality. Hopefully it will be very subtle, but we will see. Um, again, I'm still really interested in hearing how y'all would have tried to salvage that. So thanks again for watching, guys.